Aaron Judge, the captain of the Yankees, was not too happy with his own fan base last night. They were chanting, we want Soto at a guy who was replacing Soto because Soto is hurt right now. He didn't like it at all. The Jays and the A's game featured something I quite literally have never seen before in my entire life. You say, look like Luke Keekley, a linebacker out there. The London series, it's been a blast so far, and it came down to the bottom of the ninth inning. The base is loaded for Nick Castellanos and Adley Rutschman. I'm going to say this right now. He's the best offensive catcher. I've seen since Joe Maurer. I think I can safely say that now. We're going to talk about all of that and more in today's MLB recap, but just a reminder, I do post gaming videos, MLB The Show, on my second channel. I'm giving away a PlayStation 5 and Xbox a Switch over there, so the link will be in the description down below. Come on over. We still post that stuff. Now, normally I don't do this, but I'm going to skip to the sixth inning when Jose Altuve pummeled a huge two-run home run against the Angels because now it's 7-4 Houston. Altuve had four base hits on the day, but the entire offseason, we were kind of touting that the Astros bullpen would be untouchable. If you're losing after six or seven innings, your day is over. Well, Moniak, he got one home in the sixth inning, and Zach Neto's double in the eighth brought it to a one-run game. Neto scores. Michael Stefanik, Stefanik, I don't know how to say his last name, he grounds out after that double from Neto. Let me just remind you, put the ball in play, kids. That will get you a lot of money in the future if you can do that. Stefanik, he ties it, and Ohapi, he wants to win it off of Josh Hader as well. The former angel, Trey Cabbage, he caught it and then dropped it. It fell out of his glove after he slammed into the wall just like Altuve Ohapi. He went four for five. He's up to eight home runs in here, 120 OPS plus, which is insane for a catcher. Do you guys remember that trade Brandon Marsh for Logan Ohapi? It's kind of been a win-win for both clubs. Look at that transition. Marsh's new team is out in London taking on the Mets. Game one, we saw Bryce Harper hit a home run on the 15th anniversary of him being the chosen one on Sports Illustrated. I can't believe it's been 15 years. That made me feel really old, but Philly, they won game one. New York, they were not going to allow that to happen again in game number two. Even though they were down by three, Nimmo, he scratched one across. He dunked one in the other way. And J.D. Martinez, he slapped a slider to allow Nimmo a chance. And he crashes in there. Alonzo was on third, so two score on that base hit. We have a brand new ball game. Just kidding. Phillies' David Dahl is apparently Barry Bonds. The guy hit 340 with 12 home runs and 43 AAA games. He's picking up right where he left off. The Phillies, they gave their closer a lead, but uh, yeah, closing was not on the menu, I guess, in London for Jose Alvarado. He folded like a launcher. I know that Bohm probably could have made that do or die play, but he did not. Jose then screamed into his glove because he literally just hit Pete Alonso with the bases loaded, and then it got worse. There was a pass ball. New York, they kind of just played bystander and let Philly throw the game away. The Mets, they almost threw away as well. Drew Smith, he looked like the righty Jose Alvarado. He walked Alec Bone with the bases loaded, only to then shatter Castellanos' bat into a million pieces and turn into dust. Luis Torrens, he made a sick tag and throw to end it. I will say, despite one team losing and one team winning, baseball as a whole won. I love these events. The players, they love them as well. Speaking of events, I know this wasn't in London or the Field of Dreams, but the Dodgers versus the Yankees in the Bronx, that is an event in itself. The Yankees, they're trying to avoid being swept, and it started off looking like they were not going to get swept as Waldo. He jolted one out. Teoscar, he was mic'd up. He just watched it sail out. I heard a crazy thing that each player gets $10,000 per mic'd up appearance. That is the easiest $10,000 anyone could ever make because they're not doing anything different. Aaron Judge put a charge into this one as well. And with two outs, Andy Pajes misjudged it. That just can't really happen when Luis Hill is on the bump, but I guess it can happen and you can afford to have mistakes happen when you have the Dodgers lineup. Mookie, he ties it with a two-run two-bagger and Teoscar as as a six hitter is just stupid. Everyone had a chance at Teo. I mean, if the Guardians would have grabbed Teo Oscar, they would be so much better. Teo has 16 home runs, 40 RBIs as a six hitter. The Dodgers, they're up a run, and I kid you not, the reverse jinx powers were back in effect. I basically tweeted that New York is not the same without Soto. They need to give him $60 million a year. Two minutes later, Grisham hit a home run, and it wasn't a cheapie either. He barreled up a huge three-run home run. Hayward didn't even bother to move. He just watched it sail over his head. Grisham, he flipped it, and to be honest, that was kind of the show Yankees fans that he can in fact play baseball at a decent level. They were chanting we want Soto. We'll talk about that after the game because this is the same fan base who was booing their captain weeks ago only to have him go on a generational run. And I'm not being dramatic. This is not hyperbole. Aaron Judge is hitting 380 with 21 home runs and 48 RBIs over the last 43 games. In my little fuzzy opinion he has already punched his ticket to Cooperstown especially with this stretch. There's maybe 10 other humans Ever, even when they're roided up, who could actually do that over a 43 game stretch? Clay Holmes got his 19th save, and the captain, he spoke out afterwards saying he did not like the We Want Soto chance. He thinks that's disrespectful to Trent Grisham. Man, Grisham's a, he's a half a ball player. 
you know, and he showed up tonight in a big moment when we needed him. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't too happy with it, but I think he, I think he made a good point. Point across there with that homer. So Philly has 45 wins. New York has 46 wins, the most in baseball. Cleveland, they're looking for their 42nd win, which would be the third most in MLB. Gabriel Arias, he went the other way. That's exactly why he gets so much patience from the Guardians because he's a middle infielder who can go oppo in Miami, which is not easy. Now the Marlins did answer back with a Jazz Chisholm home run. Xavier Edwards, who at 365 and 13 AAA games, he doubles and he scores after Freeman booted in center. But Tyler Freeman said, I got you guys, but not before David Fry ties it up. Fry now has 20 RBIs and a 201 OPS plus. Cleveland, they were blessed by a throwing error from Jake Berger, so two men are on and now no men are on. Tyler Freeman's got it like that, the no doubt strut and the pimp job. He has 27 RBIs, right? Miles Straw, the center fielder for the Guardians last year, had 29 RBIs the entire season. He was an absolute just free out at the bottom of the order. J-Ram, he tacked on one more insurance run for Class A. Hosey has 18 home runs, 62 RBIs, a 152 OPS plus, and again, he's one of three players ever to have 330 doubles, 230 home runs, and 200 stolen bases through their age 31 season. Barry Bonds and A-Rod are the other two. Berger did have a little redemption moment. He hit a home run off of Class A. That's the first home run allowed by Class A all year. That home run raised Class A's ear rate to 0.57. It wasn't a save opportunity, but he hadn't pitched in five days, so he was out there. Man, this Tigers team, they're a confusing bunch, not gonna lie, because Riley Green, in my opinion, is a future star. He makes it 1-0 for Tarek Skubal, and then later, he saves Tarek shutout with a Superman catch in left field. Tarek, he was yelling at himself. Urshelly, he clutched up moments later with a huge two-run single up the gut, and that was followed by an excuse-me swing from Zach McKinstry. Zach drove in two as well, and Abanez, he was able to join in on the RBI party. Jake Rogers, he did not miss the invite. That's a three-run home run and an eight-run inning for Skubal. Riley had another nice play out in left, and Scoobs, he was so, so close. One out away from going seven, but but Bryce Terang tagged him. His day is done. But Scooball punched out 10 Brewers. He has a disgusting 1.9 ERA and an MLB best 2.2 fifth. That's because he strikes everyone out. His command is insane. He has a 1.6 walks per nine since last year. One more web gem before we move on. Matt Beerling with the Spider-Man catch. Detroit, they win big. And a quick update on Torkelson. He has a home run. He's hitting the cover off the baseball in AAA. So the Tiger ceiling, if Torkelson comes back and rakes with Scooball, Jack Flaherty, I love Reese Olsen. They can be a good team but what is their ceiling let me know in the comments i like the twins potential as well their lineup is ridiculous finally the al central is not a dumpster fire this game was kind of all over the place through five jared jones was not great early on there's a basis out of walk an rbi ground out a pass ball jones thought it hit off of buxton's bat and it did but the umpires they came to a meeting they kept it a pass ball was this baseball karma the buckos they said ball don't lie they got right back into it reynolds he laced an rbi extra base hit connor joe hit one far but not home run far it does fall in now staying with connor joe i thought maybe he could throw out the slow jeffers but jeffers he's in there easy the twins they tied it and it stayed that way for a while we're now in the 10th inning and uh apparently minnesota really likes hitting in the 10th inning margot he tripled in farmer willie castro got an rbi the hard way he took 97 to the back of the leg that does not feel great santana defended willie's honor he rips a two-run double down the line correa had an rbi single that was a two-run single, I should say. In the blink of an eye, the Twins, they turned this thing into a blowout. And you know what's crazy? The AL Central is the only division in baseball with three teams above 500. This year is wide open. Half the league is fighting for a wild card spot right now. I know it's only June, but it's still fun to talk about, okay? Seattle is not one of those wild card teams. They are leading the AL West. And if you guys missed it, Cole Reagans versus George Kirby was a sick matchup. J.P. Crawford, he went lefty-lefty off of Cole, which is not easy. He has back-to-back -back games with a leadoff home run. Kirby, he was cooking through five this was the only run that he allowed isbel he dropped down a sacrifice bunt reagan's he had 107 pitches through six but he was disgusting three hits nine strikeouts over his last 30 innings he's only allowed four earned runs and he has 41 strikeouts that is literally 2023 20, blake snell 2024 20, Tarek Scooball type stuff. Again, Kirby, he was disgusting. Cole's out the game now. So Tyler Locklear, that's his first big league hit. It was a clutch one. He drives in a run. And then a few moments later, he was waved home for his first big league run. Josh Rojas, he ended his little slump. I think that's his first hit in a week. The Mariners, they're up two. 
And wow, 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 MJ Melendez hit a perfect, perfect game time two run home run. I want to know the stat cast on that bat flip. He flipped it a good 15 to 20 feet. Feed me all of the emotions and flair in the game of baseball. Another extra inning game. J Rod, he clutched up with the go ahead. He's obviously pumped up. Cal Raleigh, he stepped in and delivered with a huge two run single to put the Mariners up by three. And this would have tied it if Cal hadn't done that, or at least drove in a few. Hunter Renfro skied one for a two run blast. He's only hitting 202, but with runners in scoring position, he's hitting 345. He's basically Luis Arise when runners are on base. Vinny Pascantino, dang it. The Manners, they're 37 and 30, and the Royals, they're cruising at 39 and 27. Both of these teams are going to be very active at the trade deadline, at least in my opinion. So you know how we talked about the Tigers kind of being a team where we don't know what their future holds or what their ceiling is per se. The same can be said about the Red Sox. Future trade target, Paul DeYoung really made some Boston errors kind of, ooh, that does not feel great. Paul now has 12 home runs. I mean, he's looking like 2017, 2019 Paul DeYoung, where he averaged 31 home runs per 162 games. But this is why I... I don't know about Boston's future because David Hamilton should be in their future, right? He has two home runs, nine stolen bases, and a 340 batting average over his last 18 starts. I mean, there he is swiping another bag. That set up a game-tying sack opportunity for Reese McGuire. David, he's in their standing. Like, is he going to play second base when Trevor Story comes back? What about this guy, Jamie Westbrook? He's been raking to begin his career. Another sack fly put the Red Sox up one. By the way, yes, more free baseball. Ref Schneider, Rob is hitting 340 with 14 extra base hits and 15 RBIs in 38 games. Cam Boozer, he got the save with two strikeouts. So Trevor Story, Tristan Casas, Garrett Whitlock, Yoshida, Grissom, so many big names. What do you do with all of them? Do you trade a few of them like Yoshida to free up room for Rob Refschneider? What do you do with David Hamilton? I'm curious what you guys have to make about the Tigers and the Red Sox. Let me know. It might be for a video later. I kind of have the same question for the Giants. I'm not going to lie. Wyatt Langford, he got the scoring started with a two-run missile single in the first inning. Thankfully, Marcus Simeon was okay after getting hit by a pitch. Texas then deployed a delayed steal and it worked out. Adolis, he's credited with a steal of home. He scores after the throw into second base. Simeon, again, he's okay, and he showed that. He popped off for some payback. He has 11 home runs. He's hit 111 home runs and saved 47 runs defensively since turning 30. He's been one of the best late bloomers we've ever seen. The Giants, they did battle back a little bit. Yaz, he sent one out after Patrick Bailey singled in Casey Schmidt, but Ezekiel Duran, he got those two runs back for Rivaldi. If Duran gets going, that is a big add to the lineup because he had 14 home runs and a 110 OPS plus last year. Nathan got some help from Adolis on a fantastic sliding grab to start the seventh inning. Nathan went seven. He struck out five, only allowed those two runs. So the Rangers avoid the series sweep. The Giants are now 32 and 34. Are they going to try and keep pace or should they offload a Yastrzemski, a Michael Conforto, Jorge Soler and Snell have been terrible. jung Hu Lee is out for the year. What are the Giants doing for the rest of this year? It's just I don't know. Here's a shocker. The Braves are on the verge of losing three games in a row to the Nationals after going up three to nothing in the second. Some guy named Hurston Waldrop gave up a fat four spot to the Nationals in the fourth inning. No disrespect to Hurston Waldrop. I know he's only 22 years old, but walking four in less than four innings is just not going to cut it. Garcia Jr., he capitalized with an RBI. Kyber Ruiz, that... Um, that raised his OPS plus to 56. He has a 56 OPS plus, so he's trying to lock in after that three-run home run. CJ Abrams, get on your horse, kid. He's got 10 home runs, 31 RBIs, 10 stolen bases. He's going to put up some stupid counting stats over the next decade. Three score and then another three score on this swing. This time it's off the bat of a Braves player, Jared Kelnick. Kelnick had two base hits. If Atlanta gets a breakout from Kelnick, that's honestly what they need. And I don't know how many times Kelnick can break out, but this has to stick. Kyle Finnegan, the closer is perfectly okay with that three-run home run because now it's a save opportunity. 18 saves, a 1.7 ERA. The Nationals take three of four from the Braves, and the Braves are now nine games back of the Phillies for first place in the East. I don't think they're going to catch them. Before we show Corbin Carroll having his best game in a while, I want to talk about some other East teams that are in the AL. This Baltimore offense is a legit cheat code. Like, it is not fair. Alley, he blooped one in. Gunner, he read it perfectly, so he scores. Alley has 44 RBIs already. Santander, goodness, man. His second home run of the series. He's got 14 of those this year. Grayson Rodriguez, he had a perfect game through five. He strikes out Richie Palacios. Baltimore, they did not have that issue. Kowser, he motored around for a two-out RBI triple to extend the lead for Grayson, who... um. I think he walked Bauer, so the perfect game is gone. Now the no-hitter is gone, and now the shutout is gone. Brandon Lau, he broke his bat, and he broke the shutout. It's 3-1. Grayson was then staring into his manager, so he's like, do not take me out. Do not. Okay, I'll leave now. Dylan Tate, he could not strand Yanni Diaz. Randy makes it a one-run game, but the momentum switch lasted for all like five minutes. Adley, another RBI single. Make it a six 
RBI game, the Grand Slam for his 13th home run. He's got 49 RBIs, a 303 batting average. Again, he's a catcher. He's on pace for what? 30 home runs, almost 100 RBIs, hitting above 300. We haven't really seen anything like that since Mitch Garver, but I don't know if that counts. Really, since Joe Maurer. The Diamondbacks kind of did the same thing to the Padres, just not in as grand a fashion. Corbin, he got on for Christian Walker, and Walker brought him home. That uh, that throw was way off line. Profar does have a good arm, but he had to rush it. It was a little off line. Tatis, he hit one on the line. He's got a 15-game hit streak. He's hitting 330 over his last 35 games, so he's been locked in for a while now. That's when Arizona said, we can't mess around. we got to score a lot. Jock Peterson, he hit the first base and second base gap, so two score. Lourdes, he's been lord of the RBIs lately. Marte and Jock score on a double. Jock, he barely snuck his foot in there. Lourdes has 10 RBIs over his last eight starts. Jake the Rake McCarthy. We called Jake Lamb Jake the Rake a few years ago, so the Arizona Diamondbacks have another Jake who rakes. This dude could be a star wide receiver. Like, he's 6'2 with elite speed. He's now hitting 282 with three home runs and nine stolen bases. He also walks a lot, so he has a 370 on base. Profar's got some crazy stats a 325 batting average, 10 home runs, 43 RBIs. Now, the Padres kept the pressure on. The bases are loaded. Lourdes, he's tracking it and he makes the basket catch. That pretty much does it. And the Snake said, That's cute. You scored two. We'll be taking those back now. Walker and Suarez, they had RBI singles. That's a big win, not only because they won big, but Corbin went two for four with the walk. Four different guys in that lineup had multi-RBI games. IKF has kind of been Lourdes Gurriel-like over the last few days. He stays driving and runs two more on that single. Oh my, my, Brent Rooker. Buddy, that ball had a family. 110 off the bat, 440 feet for his 13th of the year. Mitch Spence, said, thank you, I appreciate that. And then Soderstrom, he laid out to rob Justin Turner of a base hit. And this Springer chopper made it 16 retired in a row for Mitch Spence. And now he's in line for the W. Abraham Toro, he flared one to no man's land. The Blue Jays, they're now down a run, but that didn't last long because Varsho, he stole third base. So instead of a sack fly getting into third, Schneider now gets an RBI. Varsho, by the way, has 10 home runs, seven Seven stolen bases and 12 DRS. The 2020-20 season is still possible. Mason Miller and the Jays bullpen held each other in check. So another game where we needed extra innings. IKF, they're up with the bases loaded. Can he clutch? Of course he can. The dude does not miss. Five RBIs in one game for Ralph Kiner Falefa, that is not his name, but Ralph Kiner, he rakes. IKF has been raking. Nine RBIs over the last week. What is this? One of the weirdest and strangest things I've ever seen. Soderstrom, he was going for a foul ball. You say hit the truck stick like in Madden. He turned into Brian Erlacher for a second. Obviously, they called him out, and then we had some jawing between teams. Toronto was waving off Austin Adams. It's a crazy way to end it. The Blue Jays, they've won two in a row. They're one game from being 500 again. With one swing, Ian Happ got his team a lead that they would not give up. Ian Happ has 30 RBIs on the season now after clearing them up. Mike Tachman, he singled in another, so it's 4 nothing for Shota. Luke Maley did tag Shota, but that was it. Frankie Montas, by the way, he was pulled after an inning and a third, but look at Carson Spears, or I think that's how you say Carson Spears, he kept the game from getting blown way out the water. He went 5-2 and thirds shutout with 7 strikeouts. Did the Reds just stumble upon a secret stud for their rotation? Shota, he wanted 7 innings bad, and they left him out there, and Santiago said, I'll take an RBI, thank you very much, but he did get hosed at second base that kind of like put a damper on the route. Shota Imanaga then struck out the lethal TJ Friedel for a seven strikeout. Wow, that was a cool rhyme. And then the bullpen took over from there. Hector Neris, he struck out two right before getting Espinal to roll over. So he has nine saves. The Reds and the Cubs are now six and a half games back of the Brewers. They're both 32 and 34. This was one of the most predictable games of the day. St. Louis, they have a ton of dudes that crush lefties. And Colorado is throwing a lefty tie block. Pajes, he drove in the first one on a sack fly. But check this out. 21-year-old Adiel Amador, I think I said that right. He flicked his wrist for his first career base hit. He's 21 years old, like just turned 21. It didn't mean anything, but I did want to show it. The Cardinals, they started teeing off Alec Burleson. He's a man. He somehow muscled this one out because he's just that strong. He's got nine home runs. Mason Wynn, he doubled the lead with a two-run single. The Cardinals, they were handed another run. I mean, what was that? Tovar completely just airmailed it, and the Cardinals, they're now 31-33, and 33, but over their last 25 games, they're 16-9, and nine, so they've done a great job to gain some ground. And by the way, shout out to Andre Payante of the Cardinals. He struck out six Rockies in five innings. That was a monster recap. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end if you did, and I just want to reward you guys. Here's some web gems. Also, don't forget, the console giveaway on my gaming channel. See you over there. Correa with a backhand, the throw, got him, what a play. Might have changed that today, that one on the ground, that's a fair ball. Arenado throws on the run and the stretch. Ground ball, that's headed up the middle, backhand stop, Lyle's throw, gonna skip in. Fly ball, right field, Stewart turns the wrong way, writes himself. 
and makes the catch. Numbers in baseball are way down. That's a nice play by Amador.